What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now today we finish up our talks on the Way of Shadow Monk, and we are going to be building one together. Of course, if you missed our ranking video from earlier this week, that will be up in the iCard above for you to check out right there. We did go into a lot of detail on this subclass there, and so of course that would be great if you would watch that one first and then come back here. We of course are gonna be doing something a little bit different this week as far as our build. We're gonna be taking it in a very weird direction, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, most people who watch the channel are not subscribed, so please, Help us to reach our goal of 5,000 by the end of this year. I think we can do it, but I need your help in order for us to get there. And please consider joining the channel. Every time that I do one of these build guides, every time that I do a fixing subclasses video, every time I do that, I make a formal write-up of each of these for you to follow along with at home. And these are, of course, for you to download and keep for yourself. And you can, of course, gain access to all of those by clicking the join button down below. The lowest tier there, of course, will give you access to all of these build guides. And so you can take those, download them, keep them, whatever you want to do. Anyone that is silver or above is actually going to get a special shout out every week. And so here we go. There are our silver members. And so I am very thankful for all of you who are silver or above. I really appreciate you for the support. Additionally, silver members get access to my videos a whole day early, which is great. And finally, the gold tier gives you priority choosing of our variety builds every month. And so we're going to be doing a variety build this month. Last month, we did the uh, revisiting of the armorer artificer when we took a look at the infiltrator model. This month, I have an idea that is the front runner. But if somebody comes in at the gold level and has a suggestion that I like, then we'll be able to do that instead. So I'm looking forward to all of that. Again, thank you all so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. So like we discussed earlier this week, the way of Shadow Monk is all about being sneaky and getting into places that you probably aren't supposed to be in in the first place, but being able to do that somewhat safely. We have the ability to go invisible. We have the ability to cast a few spells that are themed around being sneaky and dealing with darkness. Um, and so we get several different things that really help us out in that way. The only issue really is that when you look at the culmination of all of these features, there is a bit of a disconnect and it can create this, this time where we have a bunch of tools, but we're missing just one or two little pieces in order to really make it a cohesive kit. And so that is what today's build seeks to kind of solve. And so maybe we will end up finding a really fun way to do this. Now, I will say this build does take a long time to get going, and it is one that keeps evolving as we keep getting levels in. And so I hope you guys are ready for the long haul. If you are, let's jump in. Starting off, as always, we have our race, and we're gonna go with something a little different this week. Um, it's not, it's nothing too crazy, but it's not the custom lineage. It's not the variant human. Um, it's not even one of your like more standard races. So I, I guess it's something a little bit more different. We're going to go with the Shatter Kai this week. The Shatter Kai is a really, really fun way to play an elf. And of course, elves are all very good. Uh, but this is kind of the dark elf where you get to uh, have a different flavor on it that isn't necessarily dealing with the drow. And so with this, we actually get access to several different amazing things. And the biggest one, of course, is our teleportation feature. So with this, we can, of course, teleport as a bonus action, which is going to give us some really awesome mobility. Now, obviously, we have some things like this that are built in already to this kit. However, they are limited to the lighting of the room. This feature is not limited to the light of the room. And honestly, you could go with a different elven race if you wanted to. There are a couple of options that we'll talk about in the honorable mentions. But honestly, I just liked this one mostly for the flavor, right? And I thought that the drow take on it as both the elf and half elf 
we're both just a little too redundant in what we get, and so that's why we're here with the Shatter Kai. As far as our stats go, our stats are going to look a little weird this week because we are going to be a little bit more mad than we normally are. Of course, as always, we're going to be using our modified standard array, and so my stats might look a little differently from yours if you are using the regular standard array. If you're using a point by system, if you're using rolled stats, that's fine. You can, of course, adapt your stats to just match in order from highest to lowest and go from there. For our highest stat, we're gonna go with our dexterity. Next, we're gonna go with wisdom, which is pretty normal. Then we're gonna go charisma, which I know is strange, but it's okay. And then after that, constitution, and then we don't really need strength or intelligence, so do whatever you want with those. We then will put our plus two into dexterity and our plus one into wisdom. So that gives us a 16 wisdom, which is good. And then of course we have an odd number in our dexterity score, which we will fix a little bit later on. Next up, of course, for equipment, we really only need a weapon. And honestly, the weapon isn't really all that important as to which one we take. You can take something that works with dedicated weapon if you want to, um, but it's not really gonna be our main source of damage, at least once we get to a certain point in the build. Um, so just take your favorite, just take your favorite weapon that can be a monk weapon, um, especially using the dedicated weapon feature because that does open up a lot of new options for us. Uh, but yeah, it's not gonna be terribly important and we still are gonna be using unarmed strikes most of the time if you don't have a weapon with you, but it's all good, whatever you wanna do. Let's go ahead and start taking some levels then. At level one, we're gonna actually start with Monk. And so we're not doing any kind of crazy multiclassing just yet. There are several features that I wanna make sure that we get a hold of in Monk before I consider going anywhere else. And so dedicated weapon is gonna be one of them, especially if you're using a weapon that may not normally be able to be used as a monk weapon. Um, so I wanna go ahead and pick that up as early as we possibly can. Of course, at this level, we get martial arts, which allows us to use our dexterity. It helps with our uh, unarmed strikes. It helps with a bunch of things like that. And then of course, unarmored defense as well. So we have a new way to calculate our AC, which is gonna be 10 plus dex plus wisdom modifiers. And so that's not terrible, right? It's definitely not the worst thing in the world. And so I'm cool with that. I'm definitely good with that calculation, at least for now. And it's gonna get better as we go. At Monk 2, we of course are going to get access to key, unarmored movement, and dedicated weapon. You may or may not be using dedicated weapon at this point, uh, but it's up to you. If you are, then great. If not, then it's fine. And then we also, of course, get extra movement speed here and key to give us some awesome things to do on our bonus action. And that's going to be great. It's also going to fuel uh, some of our subclass type of things. And it's just going to be great to have that around for sure. At Monk 3, we're, of course, going to go ahead and get our subclass. And so we get Shadow Arts. And this is going to give us access to some really interesting spells. Um, we get darkness, but we can't see in magical darkness. So that's a little... Eh. So for right now, I probably would use this for Pass Without Trace most of the time. Maybe Silence if you're facing an enemy spellcaster that needs a verbal component. Besides that, there's not really the, any option that's necessarily better. I definitely would not use Dark Vision because that's redundant. Uh, but yeah, I would probably just use Pass Without Trace for now. And I, we will eventually be able to change that strategy around. But for now, let's just stick with what we got. Then at Monk 4, we get our first ASI or feat. And of course, I'm taking Elven Accuracy. Elven Accuracy is going to not only give us a bonus to our dexterity, but it is also going to allow us to roll a third die whenever we have advantage on a strike. Now, right now, we do not have a reliable way of getting advantage on our attacks, but we will very soon. And so I wanted to go ahead and have this. It not only gives us this ability when we do get advantage for whatever reason, but it also, of course, is going to bump our dexterity up, which is also just as good. We also get things like slow fall here, uh, which is a great feature to help you from not, you know, dying from a, a large drop off if you were to accidentally or on purpose jump off. I guess that's a reference back to uh, Keyleth when she jumped off of the uh, off of the cliff for no reason. At Monk 5, we, of course, get extra attack and stunning strike, which are both really great features. So we now can attack twice as part of our action. And we also can spend key now to possibly stun the opponent pending a constitution saving throw, of course, which may or may not be successful. Most of the time, monsters have pretty good con saves. And so this might be a little tougher to land than most of your other type of things. 
but this will get better as we improve our wisdom score. And so that'll help. That'll definitely help as we go. At Monk 6, we get Shadow Step and Key Empowered Strike, so we can now punch ghosts and we can now teleport as a bonus action quite a long distance as long as both where we are and where we are going are in dim light or darkness, which is pretty great, honestly. We already have a ton of mobility and this just adds to that. I will say that this subclass may have like too much mobility, but I mean, I, I say that in the best way possible. Mobility is never a bad thing and having more than one route to teleport is going to be a good thing, right? Teleportation is fantastic because it means that we don't have to worry about spending key to disengage. We can instead just get out, right? Either with this feature or with our racial feature if the lighting situation isn't exactly lining up for us. So now we have reached level seven and this is kind of the point where I feel like we've gotten our, our, our base kind of under us for the monk part. And so I wanna go ahead and look at some other options now. So we are of shadows, we focus on shadows, and maybe we have delved a little too far into the shadows this time around. And so we actually are gonna be taking some Warlock levels. Warlock is a very weird option for a monk. However, on this monk, not only thematically does it make sense, but also mechanically it does as well. And I'll explain once we get there. So with this, of course, we're going to get our otherworldly patron all right off the bat. And so this week I wanted to go with probably my favorite patron. Well, there are several patrons that I really, really like. This one might just be my favorite, though, and that's the genie. The genie warlock is really, really strong for one, but it also comes with some really flavorful features in that you can hide inside of a ring or lamp or whatever it is that your genie has granted you and you also get to just deal extra damage here and there. You also get access to special spells, but depending on which type of genie that you choose. For this time around, we're probably gonna go with the Dao genie, although it's not terribly important which one we go with. You're probably going to find that magical bludgeoning damage is going to be resisted less than pretty much any of your other types of, of damage that are on the list. And so that's why I go with this one, but you're you're free to go with any of the others that you want. For cantrips on our packed magic feature, I would probably go with booming blade to go with whatever weapon that you chose. This gives us an interesting feature that allows us to lock down the enemy where, where they are. And so that can be very interesting. So we can hit them, lock them in with the uh, the thunderous energy around them and then teleport out. So that's an interesting option for us. Prestidigitation is also a pretty cool option, but I'm not super sold on necessarily which cantrip you take besides Booming Blade. Um, we're really here for other spells um, and really we're here for a second level spell, which we will get here in just a little bit. But for now, we're gonna get things like Armor of Agathus and Hex. Armor of Agathus is a decent little way to gain some temporary HP and do a little bit of extra damage back whenever we are within melee with something. And then of course Hex is a great way to deal a little bit of extra damage once we set this up with our bonus action. And so I think Hex is going to be a really nice way to use our concentration. Uh, it's, it's a nice little D6 of extra damage when we hit. So I, I don't see the problem with that. I, I think that's a really, really good spell. I do think that it's worth dropping later because we will be using something else for our concentration once we get a few more levels under our belt. Um, but for now, Hex is not too bad. At eighth level, we're gonna be a Warlock 2. And so we get our Eldritch Invocations here, which are so cool. I love the Warlock class and just the way it's set up. Eldritch Invocations give us these little, little boosts of power that we can choose. And it just makes the Warlock so customizable, right? You get so many options and Almost all of them are good, but we only get two. And so I had to be very picky on what I wanted. So we ended up going with the Devil's Sight Invocation and Eldridge Mind. These two right here basically give us everything that we want. And because we don't have that great of a charisma, we don't need to necessarily worry about things like Eldridge Blast. We don't necessarily need to worry about all of the invocations that go with that. Uh, there, there are so many things that we get to ignore on this that free us up to do other things. Devil's Sight now will allow us to see perfectly fine within our own darkness. And 
That's kind of the key here. Being able to see within our own darkness means that we now can cast it on ourselves or a piece of equipment, whatever you want, and you can now see you have advantage on everything that can't see within that darkness, which is probably gonna be most creatures, which of course then sets up your elven accuracy. And so now we have a very reliable way to set up our advantage and to set up to where we are attacking with advantage constantly, which is pretty awesome. Now, there are other ways though that we can do this without necessarily having to spend key on our spells. And so if the lighting is working out for us, then we actually won't need to spend the key in order to do this. Well, how do I, how do we want to do this though? Well, we're going to take one more level in Warlock. And so we of course get our Pact Boon here and we're going to take Pact of the Chain, which means that we get a familiar. So now we have a familiar that can be invisible with being an imp. And so now that can take the help action and give us advantage on our next strike. However, this may not always work out. The familiar may be gone. The familiar may have some other thing that it's doing in this particular combat. That's okay. We are also going to take the Shadow Blade spell. And this is where we come to an interesting point in the build where things kind of tend to rub. So Darkness takes our concentration. Hex takes our concentration. Shadow Blade takes our concentration. So we have a lot of things vying for our concentration right now, which is kind of kind of tough, right? Because we really want all of them to be active at once, but that's just not going to happen. So Hex is going to be the first thing to go and we will pick up Shadow Blade instead. So basically where we're at right now is if we are within dim light or darkness already and we don't need to cast a spell, great. Shadow Blade works out just fine we can see as as well as anything else. We have advantage on all of those strikes, and so we're good to go. If we're not in darkness, then we probably should cast darkness on ourselves and then use our regular weapon to make attacks again at advantage, but we're missing out on the extra damage that can come from the Shadow Blade, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. What if I told you there might be a way though to be able to set up your own lighting situations and still be able to use the Shadow Blade. Well, we're gonna figure out how to do that in a few levels. We're gonna actually go back to Monk now because I want to pick up a few key things before we consider uh, anything else. Now, you could go ahead and take some more levels in Warlock if you wanted to. There's an ASI right there. You could also go ahead and take the levels in the other thing that I'm going to be mentioning here in just a little bit. I personally think that it's better to go ahead and get some more key points under our belt at this point and then come back to the other thing that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Um, but that's just me. And of course, you can let me know what you think down in the comments below. So going back to Monk, we're going to be a Monk 7. And so we get Evasion. Evasion, of course, is going to make us pretty much unable to fail a dexterity saving throw. Uh, we're just we're just going to be really, really good at those. We then get an ASI or feat at Monk 8. I'm just going to bump Wisdom at this point. Uh, there's no reason to not help out our key save for when we do want to use our stunning strikes, when we do want to use anything that has to do with uh, a key save. So that's definitely good for that. Um, then at Monk 9, we get our unarmored movement improvements. We can now run on vertical surfaces and on liquids, which feels great. At level 10, we get Purity of Body, which again, like I've said, pretty much only comes into play during a cloud kill. Most of the time on other types of things, you're really not gonna see this used, but that's at least that's my personal experience. And now we get to Monk 11, where we get Cloak of Shadows, which allows us to turn invisible in dim light or darkness. Now this is where things are interesting, right? Because our whole thing is creating dim light and darkness. Either we are already in dim light or darkness and we use our shadow blade, or we create our own darkness and we use our regular attacks with our regular weapon. However, I do think that now is the time, now that we can go invisible, to make it to where we can use our shadow blade pretty much anytime we want. And I think putting this off is okay, and, and but I do think that now is the time. And so we're gonna actually take some cleric levels now. 
And Cleric is, again, here we are with the, the strange multi-classing. Cleric is, I guess, less strange than Warlock, but still it's it's different. Um, and so we're gonna actually, of course, I mean, let's be real. We all knew we were going with the Twilight Domain. The Twilight Cleric gives us so many things here at level one. We, of course, get Eyes of Night, the extra proficiencies, we get Vigilant Blessing, all of these amazing features that help us to be better in the darkness, right? Eyes of Night gives us dark vision out to 300 feet, and we can give that to somebody else. We have Vigilant Blessing, which doesn't have to do with darkness, but it makes you better at initiative, which is fantastic. But really, we're here for the second level feature of Channel Divinity, and we, of course, can get the Twilight Sanctuary. This will allow us to create our own little aura of dim light. So now we can use our Channel Divinity and go invisible in it. It's attached to us, and it won't break based on concentration or anything. It's not a concentration effect, meaning that we can still use Shadow Blade. So we can be invisible, and then once we get out of being invisible, obviously the invisibility will uh, go away when we make an attack, but we can then make attacks with our Shadow Blade pretty much anytime we want, because we're always gonna be in dim light, and we no longer have a conflict when it comes to the concentrations. So that feels really good, right? We now have advantage all the time. There should not be a case where you don't have advantage pretty much ever, um, and almost all of these features come back on a short rest, right? You get back your spell slots from being a warlock, you get your key back, and you get your channel divinity. So there are so many things that come back on a short rest that it's cool that you get to take these really quick naps as a genie warlock, and that's really, really helpful, right? I think that this is just a really cool combination overall, and it, it just gives you so many awesome things that you can do having to do with darkness. To clean up these last few levels, we're gonna go back to Monk and continue the rest of the way. Of course, at Monk 12, we get our final ASI or feat. I'm just gonna go ahead and bump Wisdom again. I don't see the reason to do anything else. Then we get Tongue of the Sun and Moon at Monk 13. Eh, who cares? We get Diamond Soul at Monk 14. Everybody cares. And so that's, that's great. And then Monk 15, of course, Timeless Body. Again, it's just a ribbon feature there. I hate to end on that, but I want to make sure we have as much key as we possibly can, and so it makes sense. So what do you think of this week's build? It's different, but I do think that it's also very effective in what it's trying to do, right? We're going to have advantage on pretty much every attack. It's going to go with our Elven accuracy, so we're going to be critting like crazy, which is going to feel really good. It's with Shadow Blade, and of course that's always going to feel really nice. And so for all of these things, you're going to feel like this like sneaky assassin that works in the dark, and it's just gonna be a lot of fun, right? Let's go ahead and jump into our honorable mentions, though, and see where we end up on those. Four other racial options, of course, like we said before, the drow, either regular full elf or half elf, are both really good alternatives for the flavor purpose. Um, of course, they work with the dark, of course, coming from the underdark, and so it makes a lot of sense, right? However, I do feel that their features are a little redundant with what we get, and so, eh, it is what it is, but they are other options if you still wanna use Elven Accuracy. Bugbear, of course, is also another good option because it also gives you access to the extra reach, it gives you stealth proficiency, things like that, all of those work really well here. For other feet options, the Crusher feet is pretty good because this, of course, will combo with our Dao Genie that we talked about. Um, it, of course, gives you a plus one of your constitution, which can feel really good. Um, and of course, if you took a Warhammer as your dedicated weapon, then you've already got that built in. Um, but like I said, it is built in if you were to say cast Eldritch Blast and you have the Dao Genie, you can apply extra damage and continue to push people that way too. Um, so that's definitely a thing to consider. Eldridge Adept is also a good way to think about this. If you wanted to go Eldridge Adept and Warcaster, you could do that instead of taking Warlock levels. So that would give you your advantage on the concentration checks and being able to see in the in the magical darkness. I don't know that three levels is worse than two feet slots. I really don't think it is just because with the three levels, we're getting Shadow Blade. We're getting other spells that we can cast. We're getting so many other things that come with this that I really think the three levels are more worth than, you know, taking two feet slots. We would have had to gone probably with 
a variant human or custom lineage in order to have enough. And so it just, it just would have delayed everything. And I think this would have gone way better. Um, the Shadow Sorcerer is probably my top pick for other multi-classing options for obvious reasons. This would allow you to see in your own magical darkness. And so that's why you see a lot of Shadow Sorcerers with X-Blade Warlocks, uh, because this is a great way to give yourself advantage very, very uh, reliably. But that is definitely something to consider. It would mean that you don't need the Devil's Sight invocation at all. But of course, you would want to take more sorcerer levels in order to get more sorcery points so that you could do this more than once per day. So you, you would be very limited, though, in your number of uses if you went this route. As far as fighters go, I mean, let's be real. Fighters are good pretty much all the time. The Rune Knight and the Battlemaster are always going to be your top picks here, right? Um, there's really not a whole lot that I can say about these that's not already been said. You can get amazing maneuvers, which can lead you to some really great positions. Of course, the trip attack maneuver can give you advantage pretty easily. Um, and of course, Rune Knight gives you extra damage. You can grow. You can have all of the different fun runes. All of those good things are a lot of fun. And finally, the Phantom Rogue fits thematically here. The Rogue just fits thematically in, the, in its entirety. But the Phantom, of course, will allow you to spread the love of your sneak attack damage. And so that is another really nice alternative. So what do we think of today's build? Let me know down in the comments below what you thought. Next week is our final week of monks, which is crazy that next week is, is it. But we are covering the Sun Soul Monk next week, going out of here with a bang. And then we are moving on to Paladin, which is going to be a ton of fun. Make sure that you've left a like on the video and subscribed if you haven't already. Hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe out there. Stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.